Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Uh, at least I feel like it's been a long wait, but the wait is over. It's time to review the LG G3 OLED. Oh my God, look how dirty this box is. It just ruined the carpet. So we're gonna do something a little bit different for this video and maybe all future uh, TV reviews. Uh, you know, normally we do a full unboxing and setup video, go through a lot of the settings and stuff like that. Those have been cool and I've enjoyed doing them. But this year I'm thinking about doing something a little bit different. And instead of doing an independent unboxing video, um, fold some of the unboxing stuff into the main review and take the time that we might, <coughs> excuse me, normally have set aside for an unboxing video, full production, and start doing a little bit more versus videos, which I think are a little bit more valuable overall when it comes to like buying advice and stuff like that. It frees me up to do different kind of work. So I hope you guys are into that. And if you are excited, uh, let me know down in the comments section if you like this approach, if you like this video. I am not just looking for likes, I need actual feedback, right? Like, let me know if you like this style a little bit better because um, that's gonna make the decision about whether we keep doing it. Anyway, so here we are with the G3. Um, a lot of people already know it comes with the wall mount included, which I have heard people complain about. Um, why don't you put a stand in the box? Well, it's the gallery series, right? It's meant to be wall mounted. And I actually think it's kind of cool that they provide the wall mount in the box. Like they just kind of flipped it around and said, all right, well, we'll give you the mount. And if you want a stand mounted, then you can, you just got to buy the stand. Buy a wall mount, buy a stand, you know, one or the other. Oh man. Yeah. So get in on this Zeke real quick. Uh, this TV obviously has been used before. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is one of the TVs that we saw when we visited LG uh, in LA. So golden sample, I would I would say, right? I mean, they've, they've gone over it with a fine tooth comb. It's been out there. It was the shining example when a bunch of journalists came for that reviewers workshop that we uh, showed you guys. Not as pretty and as untouched as it would be when you get one at home. You know what? As I get to this spot, I just realized I forgot something important. Be right back. Desktop stand. You can almost see what it says. Anyway, we got to get this out of the box, uh, get the TV out of the box and assemble all that. So we'll just kind of pull this box up, hope it doesn't fall forward, and then uh, reveal this sexy OLED TV. <laughs> Dude, it's backwards. Unveil this sexy back of the OLED TV. Well, you know what? It's cool because we got to put the stand on it anyway, right? So I hear uh, all the time, Caleb, you're not assembling that TV right. So I just want to show you here. See, LG literally says, put it face down on a table. Uh, mine's not on a table. It's on a cardboard box, uh, reinforced with styrofoam. So folks, it's fine. This is, we're good. I've done this a few times. Dang it, where's my screwdriver? And just a couple of tabs that line up. And then you guys know, I like to screw with power. Ha, huh. remember I used to make those double entendre screwing jokes. Anyway, four screws and really we should be in business here. All right, stands in. At the reviewer's workshop, I don't remember seeing that, uh, that recline. Well, maybe the fact that I don't remember seeing it that way uh, means that it's really just not that big of a deal. At least it rotates, but the wobble factor, yo. Yeah, you know what? This is basically the same as last year. This TV is really meant to be mounted. And I mean, we can see why. It wobbles that much, I think, because of the, uh, the Lazy Susan that's on the bottom of it so that you can rotate it. Um, anyway, it is what it is. There are plastic panels to cover everything up. This is where you would use your flush wall mount and then cover panels for the input bay. Um, anyway, let's flip this thing around and get it set up and turn it on. I wanna see it. Plug this guy in. Now, we haven't moved the studio lights, so let's see how that uh, anti-glare is working. Not bad. I mean, yeah, you're gonna see the lights, um, but so far so good. Got kind of that purplish tint to it, but it's still a glossy screen, which I like. Uh, mostly we just need to get the fingerprints off of here. Got to clean this screen, which by the way, I have a video on if you want to watch that link right there. Uh, normally this is where I spend 20 or 25 minutes cursing as I input usernames and passwords to get into all my accounts. And then 
Got to do the usual deal where I play some SDR content, pick a picture mode, play HDR content, picture, pick a picture mode, Dolby Vision content, pick a picture mode, and do some tweaking. So we're going to zoom right through that stuff. And uh, on the other end, if there was anything notable about the initial setup, I'll be sure to let you know. <laughs> it is speed reading. Okay. 24, 25, I don't know if that's a bug, but that is, um, yeah, no, <laughs> do you want to keep it on? No, I absolutely do not. Thank goodness that's over. Well, that was kind of fun. <laughs> okay, review time, and I don't want to hold you. So after just 30 minutes of casually viewing this TV, my first impression was just wow. Wow, wow, wow. And after all the testing and measurements and more testing, wow is basically the sum up for this review. Now I'm gonna dig into the review in a moment. And if you wanna skip to that, you can. Time codes are in the description and in the timeline on your YouTube player. But first I gotta talk about what the past few weeks ahead of this review have been like for me. And you know, I'm gonna be perfectly transparent here. I've been winding myself up over this review for several weeks. It really started for me when I attended that reviewers workshop in LA. There's a link to that video where I also thought to myself, wow, but I always try to put those initial feelings in check because those demonstrations are designed to paint products and companies in their best possible light. As a journalist and a reviewer, I take it all with a grain of salt and wait until I can dig in on my own turf and on my own terms. In addition to that, I know how important the G3 OLED is, right? It's the first OLED TV in the US to have this brand new micro lens array technology. It is 100% LG's response to all the excitement that was generated by QD OLED TVs last year. So guys, that's a lot of opportunity to dissect this TV and it is coming. But for this review, I will talk about some of the measurements I got. Don't worry, I've got those goods for you. But I'm gonna spend most of this review talking about and doing my best to show you what I love about this TV and touch on the few things that I don't love about it. Because at the end of the day, the LG G3 is one of the best TVs you can buy right now. Full stop. It'll probably end up winning some best TVs of the year awards. But really, the question is, should you get one? Should you let the G3 be what you dream about at night? Is it what you crave? And we start down the path toward figuring that out right now. Here's the takeaway on the picture quality. It is gorgeous, stunning. This TV is so close to perfection in so many ways. Everything you watch on this TV looks better for being watched on this TV. And I'll just say it right now. This is the best gaming TV you can buy right now as well. Now, the brightness improvements that the Micro Lens Array, AKA MLA, in this TV's panel are obvious to anyone who has followed OLED TVs over the years. But even if you haven't, the brightness punch this TV has, paired with its perfect black levels and pixel level control, just comes off as dazzling in a way OLED hasn't until just this last year. Which brings up a point that I know a lot of folks have wondered. Is the LG G3 as good as these fancy new QD OLEDs that are coming out from Samsung and Sony? And my short answer is yes, it is as good as those TVs. It gives them a serious run for their money. Now, the QD OLEDs are capable of color purity that the G3 here can't quite reach. So if we did an analysis, we'd see some advantages in the QD OLED column and some in the LG W OLED column. By the way, I will never, ever, ever call it WOLED, putting a hard stop on that right here. But on the whole, the big picture, this TV is every bit the premium OLED that LG needed it to be to do battle with QD OLED. It is a superb TV, and I wouldn't hesitate to make it a fixture in my personal living room. In fact, I'd be thrilled to. So what makes this TV so great? Let's break that down now. And to do that, let me start with some of the measurements I got. And again, if you're not into the whole measurement data thing, that's cool. Feel free to skip ahead to the takeaway where I'll describe the picture quality and do our best to show it off to you. But for my knit nerds or knit pickers out there, here's the goods. SDR Filmmaker Mode Peak Brightness came in at 350 nits. That is technically too bright. But for anyone not watching in a dark room, probably gonna work out for the better. And by technically too bright, I mean it's not supposed to go over like 200, 
250 nits. Two point white balance was so close to a perfect D65 white point that it was almost not worth doing anything. Uh, I knocked the green down by one point and got some of the best readings I've ever seen. Now, if you recall, white balance out of the box with the QD OLEDs needed some help, quite a bit of it. The LG G3 here, absolutely none. Looking at 12 points of grayscale, again, the average error was 0.5. I think it's the best out-of-box performance I've seen from a consumer-level TV. And when I say out-of-box, I mean untouched, uncalibrated picture mode. And in this case, that would be the filmmaker mode. Color gamut, color checker, all results were well below perceivable human error. It was so good. I reset the TV again, prohibited the TV from updating, ran the tests again, and got the same results. But more on that in a moment. The one exception to the TV's excellent SDR readings was the color luminance, which was all kinds of skewed because the TV was trying to be too bright for SDR. If you turn down the brightness a little bit in the menu, you'll get perfection. But while the out-of-box experience is technically inaccurate, it's also going to be more enjoyable for folks not in a totally dark room. And I think that will end up benefiting most consumers. In fact, let me say this uh, before I forget. The whole like, can OLED be a bright room TV with the G3 is just no longer a question. Yes, it can. Now in HDR filmmaker mode, it was more of the same. The TV can hit somewhere between 1450 and 1520 nits peak based on my testing method. And it held steady at about 230 nits with a full field white window. I think that's the best I've seen from any OLED TV. Not only that, but the TV's ABL or auto brightness limiter is not very aggressive either. I ran tests where I left the same high brightness image on the screen for long periods of time, and it held up as looking bright and punchy for way longer than I needed it to. And of course, when you're watching real content, most of the time the image shifts so much that ABL doesn't really have a chance to kick in. On the color tip, the LG G3 hit 99% of D3 color space and 75% of Rec 2020 and throughout it all was just so dang accurate. Here's the thing though, this TV right here is perhaps the most shiny example of a so-called golden sample that there's ever been. This TV was definitely handpicked for me by LG and possibly hard calibrated long before it was ever sent to me as well. Meaning even when I reset the TV, I'm not really resetting everything. Now it would be fair to wonder then whether what I experienced here is gonna be anything like what you will experience at home with a TV you buy at retail. And I'm pleased to confidently state Yes, it will be similar. I contacted several colleagues who purchased this TV and measured those retail units and their results weren't too far off from mine. And with a little calibrating, they got the same measurements I did. So it is clear that this TV is totally capable of this excellence with just a modicum of work. I just got lucky because I didn't have to do that much work this time. Lucky me, less work, more enjoyment. So the result of the excellent brightness, color, and contrast is a picture that looks so luscious and juicy, you just wanna drink it in with your eyes. Guzzle it even, it's just so good. But as important as those factors are, that's kind of been the OLED story for a while. I mean, this year's LG Gallery series is just brighter and punchier. Yet there are other factors that need to be considered. Fortunately, the G3 here nails almost all the important ones. So let's start with upscaling and general processing. How does the TV do with low resolution, low bit rate, low bit depth content? You know, cable, live streaming TV, and a lot of not so well produced YouTube videos. It does an excellent job. It isn't a miracle worker, but well, for example, just today I've been watching the Masters Tournament as streamed on Sling TV and also Paramount Plus. Overall, it looks great. And that is saying something because the streams are kind of trashy. The G3 can't do much about detail shots on highly textured images like the greens at Augusta National when there's a real absence of information there. But from a macro point of view, the sharpness is excellent. There's minimal banding, even with smooth gradation turned off and grayed out on some of the apps, which by the way is a, a weird anomaly I haven't figured out yet. Also, I know it doesn't hurt that I have a super clean panel here, but the early reports are that any vertical banding on retail samples so far 
is pretty minimal and basically invisible when watching real content. So that's a relief. Because while cinematic content, uh, 24 FPS stuff is paced perfectly and 30 FPS content is likewise displayed exactly as intended without any motion smoothing help, there is this flashing or strobing effect you get from bright objects during slow panning sequences that has always been a thing with OLED due to its instant pixel response time. But it's just exacerbated on this TV because this TV is capable of such high brightness. Fortunately, the cinematic movement setting manages to mitigate that strobing or flashing effect a bit, enough that I don't mind it anyway. But I mean, if you decide you're going to tune in on that instead of zooming out and just taking the image in as a whole, it will probably bug you. Even better news is that once you get into 60 FPS and 120 FPS content, namely video games, it's a non-issue. And if you wanna turn on stronger motion smoothing, you can and you'll get an eerily smooth picture with as little or as much soap opera effect as you like. Now, I wanna get into why I'm so confident this TV will be the best gaming TV in 2023 in a moment. But first, a couple of other notes I wanted to share. On the positive side of things, this TV has the best off-axis viewing experience I've ever seen. There's no weird tinting or loss of contrast or color desaturation. It's the best TV for the most people in any room with any seating scenario. Everyone gets a great picture. Also, the anti-glare treatment this year is more effective without any notable drawbacks. I turned this off in a bright room, still looks plenty black, and with content on it, black still look black. It's not all rosy, though. The TV does have some small faults. One is the stand I mentioned before. If you buy it from LG, it swivels, which is nice, but it angles the screen back, which you may not like, though. I should note it hasn't degraded the viewing experience in this room, but it is wobbly, which I do not like. Uh, you can get a more generic stand that will be more solid, but probably not as attractive. So that's your call if you are stand mounting. The sound on this TV is not as good as the G2 uh, was last year and definitely nowhere near as good as the A95K or some of Sony's other OLED TVs. Dialogue is audible, but it doesn't stand out as much as I'd like. In fact, the overall fidelity is just not as good as it should be for a TV that costs this much. There's bass, it doesn't sound anemic, but it lacks presence, richness, and most of all, clarity. A TV with picture clarity this good deserves sound clarity too. So I'm gonna highly recommend at least a soundbar with this TV. As for the TV's operating system, WebOS, look, it's just, it's just too much for me. I don't need all this stuff and ads and everything else. I plugged in a Chromecast with Google TV and never looked back. The Chromecast remote operates the TV just fine. Plus, Google TV is just way easier to use and more customized for me. WebOS is powerful and it can do a lot, but it's just, again, it's too much for me. Hard pass, sorry, LG. And the last thing, I'm, a, I'm not upset about this, I'm just a little bit disappointed, and that is the personalized picture mode, which, goes through this uh, process where it gives you six different picture options. Uh, you pick the ones that you like the most and it does this several times. And at the end, it customizes the picture profile based on what it thinks you will like the most. I picked the pictures that I liked the most and the ones that I thought were the most accurate. And the result was nowhere close to anything that I actually wanted to watch. It was way closer to vivid mode than filmmaker mode. So you know it was just wrong. Anyway, maybe it'll work better for you, but for me, not so much. Okay, now gamers, why do I think this is going to be the best gaming TV of 2023? Well, it's pretty simple. Now, mostly because everything that made the LG G2 the best gaming TV in 2022 is still here, but the G3 is brighter and more exciting. Uh, it caters extremely well to gamers and unlike Sony's TVs, which will support Dolby Vision Gaming at some point this year, this TV has four HDMI 2.1 ports. So maybe on a technicality, but the G3 is just gonna win. That's just how it is. With that said, Dolby Vision Gaming Mode is measuring as a little over brightened and LG needs to fix that, but they probably will in a matter of weeks, so I'm not losing sleep over that. We'll get into gaming a little bit more once we do the versus videos. I just wanted to give you that uh, bottom line on the gaming. So, top to bottom, the LG G3 is an absolute star of a TV. It is a delight. It's exciting, it's luxurious, it is everything a super premium TV should be. I absolutely 
love it. I have enjoyed myself so much just watching this TV. And honestly, for the first time since the C-Series and G-Series have been in LG's lineup, I think the G-Series this year is so compelling that it really deserves the extra money that it's demanding. It's just next level good. You'll pay for what it delivers, but you will never regret the choice. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Like I said, more content around the LG G3 is coming. So hit me up in the comments section. Let me know what you wanna see. I'll do my best to include it in the versus videos. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Speaking of helping us out, I've got a shopping link for this TV down in the description. So click that if you decide to buy this TV widget. Really helps us out. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, check out this LG G3 video I did from LA and this first look at the Samsung S95C as well.